Good evening and welcome and blessings on this special night, New Year's Eve. And I apologise if there's a slight discrepancy between the sound and the video because of the weather. So allow for the time delay and if it is irritating you, just close your eyes and just listen. Tonight is New Year's Eve, as you already know, in the UK. And what better way to end an old year by blessing it? It may have been a challenging year, as I know it has been for many people here in the North. But we have an old saying, in every situation, give thanks to God. And another saying we used to have as young novices back in the 60s, in the order that I was with in Southern Ireland, it said, man's disappointment today is God's appointment for tomorrow. So on behalf of all my brothers and sisters who've opted out of the mad, busy world and chosen to surrender their hearts to a loving God and dedicate their lives for unity and peace within the whole family of God, and that implies all faiths and none, because we are all children of the same God. And I'm not here to sit in judgment, or I'm not here to say, oh, I can't get involved with you because you don't share my, my core values as a Christian. I leave that to God and keep everything simple and try to see the face of Christ in every human being. It's not easy, but Jesus said it wouldn't be easy, but he makes it easy because he assures you and me that he's always there in the good times and in the not so good times. So let us now celebrate our webinar this evening by just relaxing in the presence of love because God is love. Whether you're a Catholic, a Christian, a Jew, a Hindu, a Muslim, a Sikh, a Buddhist, a pagan, a Druid, a shaman, they're all labels. God sees beyond the label. He sees a child of love created in his image and likeness. And that's good enough for me as a Franciscan just like Francis of Assisi. He was a hands-on man. He cared deeply for the marginalized and the poor. And that's my prayer for next year, that we can unite all the Franciscans of different faith persuasions to come together and go right back to the core values of Francis and to ordinary human beings, ordinary men and women, that they will find sanctuary in his simplicity and in his wisdom. So I'm going to play for you and dedicate this to all of you. And it's called Close Your Eyes. And guess who it is? Yes, you've guessed right, Charles Lansborough. So just be still and enjoy the words, because they are precious. Close your eyes While the summer clouds release Their silver glow And the evening rain makes patterns On the road The world is clean Evergreen, close your eyes. Close your eyes. Let the moonlight lay its hands upon your head, and the silence hold you like a feather bed. Let the day. 
just melts away Close your eyes Broken rings that drift away Like bubbles in the sky Let them go, we'll build a dream together You and I The sounds of nature lullaby your mind In the pools of twilight Leave the world behind Come with me To ecstasy Close your eyes Broken dreams that drift away like bubbles in the sky Let them go Together You and I Tomorrow Close your eyes Let the moonlight Lay his hands Upon your head And the silence Feather bed, and let the day just melt away. Close your eyes. That was truly wonderful. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. I get so carried away listening to Charlie Lansborough because he speaks and he sings from his heart. And that for me is a prayer, a prayer. Well, this evening, Francis shares this with us on day seven, following in Christ's footsteps. And he says, Almighty, eternal, just and merciful God, give us miserable ones the grace to do for you alone what we know you want us to do and always to desire what pleases you. Inwardly cleansed, interiorly enlightened, and inflamed by the fire of your Holy Spirit. May we be able to follow in the footsteps of your beloved Son, our Lord Jesus, the Cosmic Christ. And by your grace alone, may we make our way to you. Most High, who live and rule in perfect trinity, in simple unity, and are glorified, God Almighty, forever and ever. Amen. Francis shares with us a nugget, a nugget from St. John's Gospel, chapter 12, verses 25 to 26, and he says, those who love their life lose it, and those who hate their life in this world will keep it for eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me, and where I am, there will my servant be also. Whoever serves me, the Father, Mother, God, will honour them. And you and I are here because we were called by name, because the Spirit of God guided us, spoke to us, maybe coerced us to come and to break bread together 
as a new family, an internet family, where we feel safe and loved, where there is no rejection or recrimination, and where you are loved for who you are as a child of love, a child of God. I wished I'd heard those words many years ago when I left home at 16 as the eldest son of a large family of nine in Dublin. Had I heard those words, I think they would have made a big difference in my monastic training. Whereas the words I heard then were always words of fear. Fear. And in the end, I lived in fear of God. It wasn't a healthy relationship by no means, but there comes a time when God knows we are ready and he touches us and he allows us to hear and to see and to behold the face of God. For me, that was in 2008, all those years, I waited for that one moment and it was kneeling at the tomb of Francis of Assisi. I don't remember much because I cried so much. And Brother Rob came and found me after several hours of just kneeling in contemplation where my heart was opened and I was reawakened to a simple way of living without dogma, without fear, without guilt to embrace love, to embrace peace, and to jettison all negative theology. In fact, all theology that no longer served my highest good, and to try and find the barefoot Galilean on a one-to-one. -one. So let me share with you this and it's a nugget of wisdom from Francis, and it's titled Companions for the Spiritual Journey. St. Bonaventure, a brother Franciscan, shares this in the life of Francis that he'd wrote. With a feeling of unprecedented devotion, he savored in every creature as in so many rivulets, the goodness which is their fountain source and he perceived a heavenly harmony. Usually you and I think of the spiritual journey as a return of all human beings to God. Francis though includes both humanity and all creation. Like the people of Israel who had a deep sense of connection with the land Canaan and felt that it represented not only the fulfillment of human destiny, but the destiny of all creation. Francis knew the importance of creatures and earth in the culmination of our spiritual adventure. Wow, that's wonderful. We are familiar with the journey of humanity towards fulfillment, but it is difficult for many to imagine that creation could be included in this journey. This is primarily because we no longer feel the intimate participation with the world that past ages have felt. Our souls are not so easily influenced by creatures and things of this planet, at least not to the extent that we imagine them to accompany us on our spiritual journey. However, we find ourselves yearning for a deeper relationship with the world, one that is not based only on science, and technology, but one that is relevant to the whole of human existence. We may realize 
more than ever before that the soul itself corresponds to the deepest meaning of the universe. Francis' own contemplative vision reinforces this intuition. How do we rediscover a wider sense of the spiritual journey? In the spirit of Francis, we begin with a heart alive with Christ, with the cosmic Christ that Matthew Fox talks about in great detail. Christ's historical presence influenced the very structure of the universe. Wow. And it energized both creation and history. Through his birth, death, and resurrection, Christ transformed this universe and directed history towards its culmination. Just as creation flows out of the Trinity through Christ, it returns to the Trinity through him. The spiritual journey of earth then is related to our own journey back to God. St. Paul describes Christ as the ground of all reality, the beginning and the end of creation. And Paul shares with us a beautiful reflection from one of his letters to the Colossians. He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation, for in him all things in heaven and on earth were created. The word holds creation together and in doing so gives it meaning and purpose. The presence of the word in each creature and thing gives all creation a fundamental harmony and an interrelationship that unites it towards God's purpose. To understand the meaning of the word today, we need to recall the Hebrew term Dabha, which refers not to our present limited understanding of word, but to the creative energy of God that has the power to give birth to all creation even you and me. Colours, sound and expressions of the natural world all have the potential to reveal the dynamism of the word, the word at the heart of things. The light that fills the eye, the molecules that make up matter, all overflow with divinity, God's divinity. When we stand in wonder, do we not recognize an invitation to see into the heart of all reality? Francis reinforces the deep faith that the word is actually present in all nature and is always speaking to us of God's nearness and revelation. The word then actively binds creation and draws it back to God. Earth, cosmos and all humanity yearn for one thing and that thing I call it home. In what way has the natural world become a spiritual companion for you? Well, let us just now reflect. And let us use the gift of free will that you and I were given by God. Let us ask from a place of love to love. Who am I? Why am I here? 
what is my soul's purpose today? And if you ask from love, I give you my word, you will not be disappointed, but you must be patient. And you must allow yourself to listen, not with your ears, but with your heart. And the language of love is silence. So let us play this for you now. And it's the Earth Prayer by Sanatan Kerr. Just relax now. stillness. Join me in the monastery garden and let Mother Earth with the entire heavenly host draw you closer to who you are as a being of light, a being of love. Just sit quietly now and let the Spirit of God come upon you as he came upon Mary. And let us be still and behold and fold and listen to the voice of Spirit speak to us now.
monastery garden, we are surrounded by angelic beings of love, and they've come to minister to you. And the creatures of the earth that God created for you, the animal kingdom, the birds of the air and the fishes of the sea, who sing the praises of God, they come to greet you. They come to bless you. Receive their love. Receive their love. And Mother Earth releases her love up through the soles of your feet, balancing all of your chakras, those energy wheels. And she's releasing pure love. And it makes its way up to your heart, your beautiful heart. Receive her love. Be at peace in the presence of this love. Let us care about each other. See the earth.
beautiful earth mother Gaia we know that we are loved because the ground we walk on is sacred and the father mother God breathes the breath of the Spirit of God into our hearts each waking moment and there is no fear here, there is only love. And as a child of love, you have a right to be here. For you are a child of God. An ambassador of peace. An ambassador of love. Breathe on us, O oh breath of God. Fill us with life anew, that we might love what thou dost love, and do what thou wouldst do. Breathe on Margaret and Victor, O oh breath of God. Fill them with life anew, that they might love what thou dost love, and do what thou wouldst do. Breathe on Sister Sue, O breath of God. Fill her with life anew, that she might love what thou dost love and do what thou wouldst do. Breathe on all here, O breath of God. Fill us with life anew, that we might love what thou dost love and do what thou wouldst do. O oh, Father, Mother, God, in the presence of all that is, in the presence of our forebears, our family, who are in spirit, in the presence of each other here, 
we bless you. We thank you for this moment, a moment of breaking bread, symbolizing love, friendship, togetherness. Touch each one of us now, O oh Christ, and fill us with your healing love. Fill us with your healing love. Amen. Amen. And I want to share with you as we close now the beautiful words from Reverend Sister Allison, one of our hermits who lives in New York. And she says this, peace be the earth, peaceful the ether, peaceful heaven, peaceful waters, peaceful the herbs, peaceful the trees. May all God bring me peace. May there be peace through these invocations of peace. With these invocations of peace, which appease everything. I render peaceful whatever here is terrible, whatever here is cruel, whatever here is sinful. Let it become auspicious, let everything be beneficial to us. And that's from the Hindu tradition, from the Atharva Veda, and from the Buddhist tradition, from the Metta Sutta, we read, this is what should be done by one who is skilled in goodness and who knows the path of peace, wishing in gladness and in safety, may all beings be at ease, whatever living beings there may be, whether they are weak or strong, omitting none, the great or the mighty, medium, short or small, the seen and the unseen, those living near and far away, those born and to be born, may all beings be at ease. Even as a mother protects with her life her child, her only child, so with a boundless heart should one cherish all living beings, radiating kindness, over the entire world, spreading upwards to the skies. And from the Jewish tradition, from Isaiah 2, verse 4, Come, let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, that we may walk the paths of the Most High, as it is written in the Holy Scriptures, and they shall beat their swords into plowshares, and their spears into pruning hooks. Nation shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war any more. And from the Christian tradition, we read in the Gospel of Matthew and the Gospel of Luke, Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be known as the children of God. But I say to you that here, Love your enemies, do good to those who hate you, bless those who curse you, pray for those who abuse you. To those who strike you on the cheek, offer the other also, and from those who take away your cloak, do not withhold your coat as well. Give us everyone who asks from you, and of those who take away your goods, do not ask them again. And as you wish that others would do to you, don't do so to them. And finally, from the Muslim tradition, we read from the Quran 8, stroke 61, we read, In the name of Allah, the Beneficent, the Merciful One, praise be to the Lord of the universe, who has created us and made us into tribes and nations, that we may know each other, not that we may despise each other. For as it is written in the Holy Quran, if the enemy inclined 
inclines towards peace, do thou also incline towards peace and trust in God. For the Lord is the one that heareth and knoweth all things. So on this New Year's Eve, we bless, we bless 2015 and we now welcome the new year in the presence of God and we ask God's blessing on each one of us here and to keep us safe, to keep us safe. Amen. The blessing of heaven, the blessing of earth, the blessing of sea and sky on those we love this night and on every human family the gift of heaven, the gift of earth, the gift of sea and sky, the gifts of brother sun and sister moon and the animal kingdom be in your heart now and forevermore. Amen. Good night. God bless you. And thank you for staying with me. Thank you for your love, for your friendship and for your support. I look forward to your company again next year. Peace, shalom, inshallah. Haxet bonum, om shanti, solo di caritas. Salam alaikum, namaste.